Welcome to the Right Club Podcast, where the focus is on helping you, the real estate investor, advance to the next level. And now let's join this week's hosts and share ways for you to customize your life. Well, we used to say stick, stick in one, you know, pick one lane and, and, and stay there. The market's changed, as you said, and, and there's a little more uncertainty and all the rest of it. So I think now, the at least the prevailing attitude from people I know and been talking to is, yes, learn about one lane and then add another one and then learn about that. So you're not you're not doing everything all at once, but you do learn and then you also learn what works, right? What you like, because that's important too. If you don't like it, then don't do it, right? Great. And, and to your point too, is yeah, I didn't go like that. Off the start, I was focusing on one market. And you if you just start with like the shotgun blast going everywhere, What's going to happen is you're not important to any property managers. You only you don't have enough pull with them. You're just that one horse person, right? You don't have enough. If you can be someone who can come in with like even four or five properties slow, or even like, or even have a plan to build that with that property manager and contractor, you become more valuable to them, right? And you know, it, it just, it's helpful with everything. And also you can then renegotiate your property management fees and you can slowly bring those fees down just by going into one market. So um, yeah, I think what you said is exactly right. And I kind of like might've jumped because I am buying a lot of properties and that's why I'm in so many markets. So I was a great caveat because I think that was a very helpful for a lot of these people listening. Yeah. Cause we, I think sometimes we forget that, uh, well, if I'm a, you know, our listeners, some of them haven't even bought one yet. So, so yeah. just buy one and buy another, whatever strategy you pick. Yeah. Get comfortable with it. No, two or three or four under your belt, then pick another strategy. Look around and see what you like, get some training, get some coaching, mentoring, and then do that. And it does make it a little bit easier. So there's nothing worse, I think, than getting out into real estate and really not knowing what you're doing. That's when you run into trouble, right? I totally agree. Okay. Totally agree. Yeah. Okay. So you talked about some of the great reasons to invest in, for Canadians to invest in the U.S., what are some of the reasons why they might not want to invest in the U.S.? Well, with all of it, there's like always every side of coin. There's always you switch a different market in Canada. You switch to everything. There's always a disadvantage and an advantage to everything. Um, one of the big ones is that um, there's also the sticker shock for lending when they get down to the U.S. Um, when our rates were super low, theirs were more expensive. When as the rates went up, ours are still more expensive. Like it's more expensive in the United States, right? It's it just always is the same it's always cheaper, at least since I've been investing for like the last eight years, it's always been cheaper to get lending in Canada, right? Um, the hard part too is that that first property, you know, it sounds cheaper, like we talk about the price points are lower, but we're also talking about a different currency. We're talking about USD and USD is also more expensive. So like right now you're paying about $1.35 for an American dollar. So, you know, that's, you know, you really got to be thinking about paying an extra 35%, right? And you're also going to expose yourself to, you know, the currency exchanges as it goes, right? So depending on what your project is, if you wanted to do like a flip and it's like a six month flip, if you need to bring the money back to Canada afterwards, then you're exposed. If it drops down to $1.25, there's 10% to just banished into the ether. It doesn't, doesn't exist anymore. Right. Um, and that's one of the things is having money on both sides to make it a little bit, you don't have to rely on, you can wait for the good spots to move and take advantage of the, the market and the dollar when it's at certain spots. Um, the other thing is privacy. I talked about privacy being an advantage. It's also a disadvantage. People can find you, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't want to be found, um, you, you like your, um, you don't want letters in the mail. You don't want the wholesalers. You don't want any of this stuff. Um, people can find you. People, uh, if someone goes and trips in your sidewalk, they can, an attorney can, or even a regular person could look up, oh, this corporation owns this property. This corporation also owns all of these properties, which could make you a target, right? Because it shows that you have, there's more to go after. It's worth it for the attorney to try after, to go after you, right? Um, you're also talking about two, like with all this, two different countries. Two different tax returns. You're dealing with the IRS. You're dealing with Canada Revenue, uh, and you got to appease both. Um, for people who've never dealt with two different countries for taxes, you file with the foreign country first. So you'd file with the IRS first, 
they give you a summary or your accountant will give you a summary that you give to your Canadian accountant. And that's, you know, there's a form that says, do you have over $100,000 in foreign income or something along those lines? And you check that box, they'd enter all the forms. It's not difficult. Um, and in all honesty, you're probably going to get more of the tax burden on the Canadian side, even if the property is in the U.S. Uh, typically, uh, Canada Revenue has not as favorable laws as the IRS. So the IRS will charge you maybe a little bit of tax and more of your tax burden will be treated like the property is still sitting in Canada. But this also can be mediated depending on how you set up your structure. The way I'm talking about right now is if you're buying it in your personal name or an LP or an LLC and it's flowing down to your personal tax return. But if you're doing it in a corporate return, there's different ways to strategize that to, to, to keep that away. So um, what that says is, for heaven's sakes, before you even think about investing in the US, talk to the professionals who can help you, right? Lawyers and accountants who have expertise on both sides of the border and can set you up so that you don't get, oops, those big surprises and can, can mitigate as much as possible the, the consequences of owning property in another country. Thanks for listening to the Right Club Podcast, where the focus is on helping all levels of real estate investors advance to the next level and help you customize your life. Be sure to tune in next week at rightclub.com slash podcast or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you get a few seconds, please rate the podcast wherever you're listening. It helps the show get noticed by others like you. And we truly appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe.